Today, I need to spritz myself with excitement because we're starting a two-part lip filler special. Hi guys, my name's Dr. Sarah Tonks. I'm a cosmetic doctor in London. Today, I am talking to you all about lip fillers. Now, a lot of people are terrified of having lip fillers done because they think they're gonna look done, overdone, they're not gonna be able to move their face afterwards. And I think there's a lot of fear around that because many times the images that you see do look a little bit crazy. And then within the camp of people who are happy and ready to have lip filler done, there's always the question of, what product do I use? How should I have this injected? What do I do if I have a little bit of asymmetry in the lip? Well guys, fear not, because I am gonna do my best to attempt to answer these questions over the next two videos. Okay guys, so my first patient today, she was very happy with the current shape of her lip. She didn't wanna change that at all. Apart from the fact, for her, it wasn't wide enough in this direction. For clarity, this bit that direction right there. So how do we go about making somebody's mouth wider but without changing the overall shape? Well, it's pretty straightforward. I tend to do it using a cannula. While we're on the subject, what else would I do for this patient? I would probably do some cheek fillers right here and here just to give her a bit more of a sweep upwards. I'd definitely fill this area around here and yeah, I think I'd do her temples too, and maybe do a bit of filler in the central part of the forehead to improve the light reflex there. That's an aside, obviously, for today. Let's take a look at the treatment. Here, I'm using Juvederm Volift. I think you call it something different in the States, it's Volur. And I used two mils in total, all done with a cannula. I'm putting the same amount in each quadrant of the lip. By the way, a quadrant would be that bit there. So you've got four quadrants in the lip. And one of the good things about using a cannula is you tend to get a bit less swelling than if you do it with a needle. The results are different though, so you can't really substitute one for the other. If you need to use a needle, you need to use a needle. It's as simple as that. Let's take a look at her results. Et voila, two mils of filler. People often ask, what does two mils of filler look like in the lip? Well, it kind of depends on how it's put in and what the filler is. This is what it looks like if you have two mils of Juvederm Volift with a cannula. Let's have a look at her smiling. People often have lip filler done because they feel like their top lip is disappearing when they smile because it gives you a little bit more, I guess, firmness to the upper lip so it doesn't tend to curl under as much. I think we've still got a nice subtle result there. Next patient. I wanted to go a little bit further this time. So I've got this lovely lady here, never had anything done before. We do have a bit of a discrepancy in the lip shape. So I don't know if you guys can see, but we've got an overhang here and more fullness in the upper lip right there it's kind of pushing down on the lip. Something like that is really super tough to treat. You can see that we've got this here. See the way that it almost comes down at the side? I call that the lion lip. If you've got a lion lip, I'm sorry, you're very tricky. I decided we needed to try and even up this lady's asymmetry slightly. So I'm gonna do that using filler just in the lip alone and I kind of wanted to go for a bit more of a glamorous sort of result. So what I did was first of all, went into the lip border using sort of a more traditional method. This is using a needle. And this is just to emphasize the lip border itself. Then I used a technique, lip tenting, just in the middle part of the upper lip. So you can see I'm injecting downwards into the upper lip and then out again, and that tends to rotate it up. Now I'm doing one of my favorite techniques, which is I switch the needle to a finer needle and then just focus on the middle third of the lower lip. If you guys remember, ideally the middle third of the lower lip 
should be where the fullest point is. And ideally, it would be in line with the distance in between the eyes. So that's where you want to focus most of your volume. So by doing these tiny little injections all the way along the border of the lower lip, you can just kind of hock underneath it and it will rotate it out very slightly. And you see here, the way that I'm kind of moving the lip and bringing it forwards like this, that's to really emphasize um, the shape here to make it come out slightly. I'm using the same needle in the GK point, Glaugo Klein point, which is, I guess what a lot of people call the Cupid's bow. It's this point right here, where the lip meets the philtrum of the nose. Then, because I really wanted to go for more fullness here, I used a cannula in the upper and lower lips. And in the part that you can see in the filming, she's had two mils of Juvederm Volbella. The reason why I picked Volbella and not Vollift is because I wanted more of a, um, a hydrated kind of look and not something which would look too harsh on her. I probably could have used either for her, it's just my preference. Because she works in the clinic, I actually got her back about a week before we did the after pictures and I put a little bit more in because I wasn't really happy with the asymmetry still. So in the after pictures, she still does have a bit of swelling. So sorry about that, guys. You can see she's still got some swelling there. I really should have left this another week before doing her after pictures, but I do them as a batch. So sorry, you'll have to imagine what it would look like after an additional week. And this is the same lady smiling. So this is interesting. In the before, you can see a bit of the gum here. Ooh. And of course you can drop down the smile line by putting some Botox right here. Um, another way to do it would be to put some filler in exactly the same spot because it stops this muscle from pulling up quite so much. Or you can sometimes fill the lip and again it will disguise um, a bit of the gum show. So in her after picture you don't see as much pink of the gum. That's not why we were doing it. Ugh, I really wish that I'd given this another week because I see her around the clinic, obviously, because she works there and uh, they look really nice now. By the way, total number of mils for her, three, all the same product, Juvederm Volbella. You know, some people, they really do win the genetic lottery when it comes to cheekbones, jawlines and lips. And our next patient, she has really done well. I think she got my share of jawline when it was being handed out, very unfair. You can note, bit of a discrepancy in the upper lip. This side, not as full. But don't worry guys, we can fix that, no problem. What else would I do? Well, I mean, come on, she's got the same bone structure as Angelina Jolie. You could maybe soften the jawline very slightly perhaps put a little bit of Botox in there. Um, could maybe do underneath the eyes. She is just starting to lose a bit of volume in the A-frame here. You could maybe do that. That's about it really, isn't it? I mean, she looks great. Well, let's have a look at what we did to try and correct this asymmetry. First thing, use a cannula. This is Juvederm Volift. We did all four quadrants with the Juvederm Volift, but just kept a little bit of it to put into the upper left lip. And I'm doing that with a 32 gauge needle, just on the edge of the border to try and uh, turn that round slightly. So let's have a quick look at our before and afters. Pretty happy there. Um, much more symmetrical looking. And you can see, using a very small amount of volume like this, one mil, doesn't really give you a huge change. People are often absolutely terrified about using even half a mil in the lips sometimes. So I know she's got very, very full lips to begin with, and that's really important when you're considering how much you're going to put in. So if you're somebody who's got a very, very small, thin lip, and you put two mils in, it's gonna look very different to somebody who's got a full lip, like this patient and our first patient, um, because they already have a lot of volume in there. So in terms of percentage change, 
It's not going to be much for somebody like her or our first patient, but for somebody with a very thin lip, of course, it will be more noticeable for them. Also, with someone with a thin lip, you really don't have much latitude in any um, small asymmetries that may be created as a result of having the treatment. So you do really have to be super, super accurate. She's really got lovely natural lip anatomy. So let's just recap over that. I mentioned it in some previous videos, but let's talk about that now. So ideally, you would have the fullest point of your upper lip being in the center here, that's the medial tubercle. Then you would have two sort of pillowy bits on either side here. They're your lateral tubercles. So it forms like a triangle, like so. A lot of people try and recreate that using, you know, the bit of string technique. Really hate it. Can't stand that look. That keyhole lip thing. Oh my God. It looks so 2005. Then you've got your Cupid's bow here. And at the top of the Cupid's bow, that's your Glaugo Klein point. As I mentioned before, the most fullness in the lip would be in the middle third of the lower lip. And your ideal lip ratio, it kind of depends because on some people, um, one third at the top to two thirds at the bottom is better, but on others, 50-50. When it becomes more than 50-50, um, it kind of looks weird, and then that's when people know that there's something not quite right. So, let's have a look at her smiling. And yay, there we are. Nice natural result on smiling too. I think the one take home message that I wanna make after showing you three different ways of doing lips is you can't do the same thing for everybody because everybody's different. What one person needs is not gonna be appropriate for the next person. And if you only have one way of treating a problem, um, you're never gonna get the best result. As they say, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Okay guys, so that's it for this week. Join me again next week for the second part of my lip filler special. Don't forget your spritzes at the ready because you are definitely gonna need them when I'm gonna be talking about more ways of doing some lovely juicy lips. I'll see you then.